Hey now, what's up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I'm not technically done with my 2016 catch up movie reviews. I was going to do Alice Through the Looking Glass. But I decided, you know what, let's make this a little fun. Let me go back and not only rewatch the Alice in Wonderland 2010 movie, why don't I go back and watch and review the original, the cartoon, the classic, Walt Disney's Alice in Wonderland. This came out in 1951. Holy crap. This is one of those movies, uh, just one of the stories, Alice in Wonderland, that I feel like everybody knows. And I just assume that I have watched this animated movie. I had to have watched it, right? Everybody, I'm sure, either thinks they've watched it or has watched it. Watching it now, I might have watched it in parts. Or I have watched it so long ago when I was young that I don't remember it as much as I thought I did. It's funny to see Walt Disney's logo at the very beginning. It's, it's 1951. It's just, it's very different. Colored by Technicolor. <laughs> I mean, that you could tell was a long time ago. Now it's based on the book, the same name, written by Lewis Carroll. And uh, the plot is we meet Alice, who is a very young girl. She's with her, her cat. And she has this wild imagination. She's talking about how in her own world, uh, the animals can talk and it's all fun and it's this and that. And then she happens to see a rabbit, a talking rabbit who says he's late for something. She follows him into the rabbit hole, falls in there and winds up in this wonderland. And she meets so many random and weird and goofy characters along the way. Now, what I think of the original Alice in Wonderland is this movie is fun. It is. Look, am I going to sit here and say that I love this movie or that it's an all time classic? I mean, it is in a lot of ways it is. But I feel like I'm sure you would find more people, other people who would who would feel a fondness towards this movie a lot more than I do, for example. I didn't really grow up on this film. I was aware of the characters, aware of the story, but it wasn't something that I watched all the time or grew up with. So watching it now, I will say that it's a little cheesy. Hell, it's it's flat out cheesy. It's corny. It is. But I will say that. For some reason, while I was watching this, and especially watching the Alice character, who is voiced by Catherine Beaumont, this Alice character, as young as she is, as naive as she might be, she is also smart. She's very young, but she's smart. She kind of knows her way around certain situations. Uh, she does talk to herself a lot, so that's kind of funny. Always narrating everything she does. But I, I couldn't help but think that if I had a daughter, I would love to show her this movie, especially uh, at a young age, if she was like maybe five or even younger. This is age appropriate for kids. There's enough singing, there's enough goofiness, there's enough cheesiness, there's a lot of, and the movie has like ADD. It, it's it's such, such fast paced characters that she meets when she's in Wonderland. You get first Tweedledee and Tweedledum, who, this is gonna sound weird, but, these are characters, even the Mad Hatter, which we'll talk about later. And, and I think I've mentioned this before, but the Batman villains, <laughs> the Batman mythology, the Batman in the comic books have apparently used a lot of Alice in Wonderland characters to be villains. I guess villains who were inspired by the story and took on those personas like Mad Hatter and like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. These are characters that the way how I was first introduced to them was through Batman. So once I found out that they were characters from the story, it was kind of weird. Uh, and, and watching this now, it's like I have to get used to the fact that this is where they originated. It's the Caterpillar character was one of the characters that I enjoyed probably the most. Uh, he's sitting there. I swear smoking something, like something 
good <laughs> because he's so on cloud nine he never quite really registers who alice is every time she tells him he he's blowing smoke in her face and she's getting contact high from it it's all a funny scene even the way he says exactly <laughs> like that had me laughing pretty hard the biggest laugh i think of the movie was the scenes with him even the cat i thought was very creepy and very weird but it's it helps put life into it. it it's it's an interesting design for the cat even when alice starts to cry when she's lost and she's helpless even the appearance of this creepy cat is is enough to cheer her up now i talked about the mad hatter when she goes to have a, a tea party with him it's funny watching the movie because it's such a short scene it's such an almost nothing scene really when when in in context of the movie but in in history like everybody remembers this scene everybody references the tea party scene the mad hatter and and i almost think of alice and the mad hatter having this really great maybe relationship or him looking after her in this wonderland no when you watch this original movie he's just a really goofy talks with a lisp like there's not a whole lot to the mad hatter here i think more of that tea party scene goes to march hare who is a rabbit that's there and he's more doing the talking he's more in charge he's the one offering alice the tea and whatnot so that was interesting especially because i expected more maybe from the mad hatter i also got a really good laugh when alice after that tea party she walked out and was like that has to be the stupidest tea party i've ever been to and that made me laugh as well now when the movie goes to the red queen and she's so like evil and power driven and off with their heads it's the, it's it's i don't want to say over the top but it's very like weird where that story goes to and then at the very end of the movie you see that it's all a dream and because i'm sitting here now and i'm thinking to myself okay is this movie going to end with the ambiguous is it a dream is it in her head is it her imagination did she accidentally find her mom's stash of of some good stuff and, and imagined all of this it could be either one of those things until you see the end of the movie and no it's just a dream she passed out and in the middle of, of the grass and <laughs> this was all a dream so that was interesting uh, this movie is definitely in a lot of ways a classic. I get why people are that fond of it. I get why people love this film, especially if they grew up with it. Again, it's a movie that I almost can't wait to show my kids one day when I have them. It works on those levels. I didn't grow up on it, so it's not probably in my like top 10, but I still recognize it's a fun movie. It's an entertaining movie. There's a lot of good things about it. So guys, let me know in the comments below what do you think of the original Alice in Wonderland. Do you like it? Do you love it? Did you grow up with it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.